That's five shillings for the butcher, half a crown for the milkman, and a ten shilling note for... Well, I suppose you can have a threepenny bit <coughs> each this week. How much does that leave me for a bit of fish, Avril, and a pound note? Who's ten shilling note for? Dragey's Fine Furniture. It's a monthly repayment on our bedroom suite. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of furniture. Come on, Avril, work it out. But you haven't got a pound note. I know I haven't got a pound note. Pound notes have a habit of getting broken into. How much is 18 shillings from a pound? Oh, that's easy. Hurry up, Pavel, we'll be late. Two shillings. That's right. There, and you all the time. 20 shillings make one pound. 12 pennies make one shilling. I know all my tables. Here are them, threepences. I'm older. I ought to have more. There is no more, love. Perhaps when Jimmy gets a proper job. In the meantime, you'll have to be content. Now, come on, off you go. Have you any library books due back? Oh, Mum, I love my name. All right, then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, Mum, there's an hand of Brazil under the bed. Oh, Patricia, that's just how things get lost and have to be paid for putting them in silly places. Bye, Mum. Bye. Spring 1937. We are still recovering from the Depression. <laughs> During the last few years, up to three million people have been out of work and on the dole. There are still long queues at the labour exchanges. Over a million and a half are unable to find jobs. Unemployed men have marched to demonstrate their plight as the men of Jarrow marched to London last autumn. When a local factory closes its gates, poverty strikes a whole neighbourhood. But there are new job opportunities in light industry, although people may have to leave home to find work. And this spring, a new king, George VI, is crowned, and his elder daughter, Princess Elizabeth, is heir to the throne. Will life for the British people take a turn for the better during the reign of George VI? Nine pence and five pence, that's one and two. And the other bit, and that was four pence, so that comes to one and six in all. Now, there's your postal order. Now, if you come over to your shop side, I'll get your mansion polish separate. What size did you want? Threepence, wasn't it? I think so. And I'll put a monster in for you. Thank you, Mrs. Brown. Clara, what size are you choosing? <sighs> Licorice? Now then, young ladies. We can't decide. How about would two ounces of mintos divide equally between us? <laughs> well, we'll see, shall we? That's it. I took the tube of fruit pastels, I took the bar of chocolate, and two pennies with the mintos. Yeah. Very well. And if the mintos aren't even numbers, you can always buy one in half. Hadwick, may I have a word? Arthur Hodgkins. I don't know if you remember. You used to be Clark at Halliwell's, didn't you? That's right. Yeah. Before you were made up to postal supervisor, that was. And you were more on the counter in those <laughs> days. Well, what can I do for you, Arthur? It's my eldest, our Jimmy. He's left school and been looking for work since Christmas. And uh, he's keen and obedient, and I wondered if... Um, hmm. How old is he now? Fourteen. But I don't want him going down a blind alley. You know, a few bob a week for a couple of years and then the sack so his employer can have another school leaver as cheap labour. 
I'd like him settled in a job with prospects. Well, he could do worse than a Crown Post Office, then. Mm. I'll let you know. There may be a boy messenger wanted. They give him a start. Oh, it's what he needs, a start. Mm. He'd make his way, give him a start. <laughs> well, can't promise anything, mine. We've a lot of youngsters applying. No. Uh, well, thanks, Mr. Puppet. No name. No address. If you're lost, you'd be better off following somebody else. I can't help you. I might have to go away and live in Birmingham. Please, I'll have to go back to the library today or else. There are better things to do with our money than pay library fines and overdue books, haven't we? Ah! Oh, look. Here's your big brother's stamp catalogue. I don't know, Edward. Whatever shall we do without him? We don't want our Jimmy to go and live in Birmingham, do we? Have you made up your mind yet? What about? Juvenile transferring scheme. Weren't they going to find you something? I'd rather find something myself than stop here. No jobs in this week, though. What would you do if you went to Birmingham? I work in a bicycle factory. There's a job there to go to, all right. They pay you fair. Who do? Ministry of Labour. They pay you fair, put you in approved lodgings, top up what it costs for your keep, and give you at least four shilling a week pocket money. It's more than I've ever had in my life. Hey, I'm surprised you don't jump it, Chance. But what you know about bicycles already, you'll be managing director before long, I shouldn't wonder. Not that I want to lose you, but you can't turn it off with only a paper round. I'd take you on here, only me and the missus can manage this between us. Aye, I know. It's the same everywhere. But I'll have to find something soon. I can't stay living at home and not paying enough for me keep. It's not fair on Mum and Dad. Oh, heck. He's still here. He's a grand dog. You want to try and find the owner, there may be a reward. Aye. Now, I wonder who that can be. Dragon Bell Man or the fish cart? Should we have some nice fish pie, Edward? <laughs> If it's rag and bones, we've none to spare, have we? We need them, don't we, love? <laughs> You've been a long time. I did two rounds. Oh, good. Milk was in passage, you must pay him. All oh, right, love, keep an eye on Edward for me, love. Yeah. Come on, give us your hand. Put your glove on, shall we? See, the unboxing was what you are to these. Yeah. Come on, let's have your hand, then. When I'm rich, I'll get you a big pair of boxing gloves. Yeah. Do you want one? Well, you just have to wait, then, won't you? Breakfast it does it. It's fixing as we go through such a lot of milk. Well, go and get yourself a bowl of cereal, love. You've had nothing yet today. Come on. By the way, what's that dog doing outside the back door? It's a stray. It keeps following me. Oh, don't encourage it. It's all right. Take him to the police station. You mustn't let him get attached to you. We can't afford to keep him. He just wants a bit of company, that's all. What's wrong, love? Nothing. Oh, you want more than that, Tom. I don't. You're being silly. Well, it's just that I might as well have stayed on at school for all the help I am. Now, listen. If this little treasure hadn't come along and taken us all by surprise, we'd not have let you leave. Your dad will soon find your job. And in the meantime, I'm very grateful for what you give me from your paper round. You'll pay for your papers while you're here, Mr Padwick. That's right. News Chronicle, John Bull and the Radio Times. And your lad's Oxford, two weeks. I shall have to give up either smoking or reading. Yeah, and mm. ten craven A, sixpence. Mm. And keep a penny for the paper, boys. Good. Doesn't squash the papers or leave them sticking half out in the rain, getting soggy. Now, that'll be Jimmy Hodgkins on your round. He'll be losing him soon to a bicycle factory in Birmingham if he doesn't find a local job. Ah, is his father booking clerk at South Bradley Junction? That's the one. Hmm. I might be able to put something his way. What's your opinion of young Jimmy? Oh, he'll do. I've no fault to find. He's keen, honest, punctual. He'll do. Mm. Does he seem interested in the post office side of your business? He delivered telegrams on the casual service, and he's keen on collecting stamps, if that's anything to go by. But then he collects cigarette cards, for that matter. <laughs> oh, by the way, I don't suppose anyone reported finding a spaniel, have they? Have you ever loved someone just as I love you? 
April 28th, today. I'm sorry I'm spent up, but I do need it. Fair enough, Mrs. Hodgkins. I don't like having anything on the slate, but I'll catch up next week. Thank you very much. Always ready to oblige a good customer. My word, Edward's growing fast. They all yeah. are. Jimmy will be going into long trousers when he gets a job. That'll be another expense. Not that he's having much luck. No, he's not keen on the juvenile transference scheme, is he? We none of us are. It's a good idea, <coughs> sending the young folks where there's work for them, but don't mind telling you I've had some sleepless nights. He's only 14. No matter how hard it is to make ends meet, the harder still to see him off at the station and not know when he'll be coming back. But Arthur and I, we, we just want what's best for Jimmy. Anything? No. What have you done today? Nothing much. Oh, I did take your library books back. They were due in. Thanks. Still got the dog? No, I think he likes me. Does Mum know? She says we can't afford him. No, we can't afford anything. All the girls in my class are starting dancing lessons. But I can't go. It's only a shilling. I know. I must get a job. He's not starving, is he? I bet he's got a good home somewhere. I bet his owners are worried, wondering what's become of him. I never thought of that. What's that man doing? to drown it. Oh, love, I know how you feel, and it's a lovely kitten, but... Oh, no, we can't afford it. Oh, but, Mum, how much would a little kitten like this eat? Well, milk and fish every day for a start, and then there's veterinary bills if it's poorly. Still, it's different from a big dog. Oh, but no, love, we can't. Look, sit down a minute. You know I'm short this week. I'm short nearly every week. Your father rarely brings home more than three pounds a week and there's a lot of us living off what he earns. You're going to have to face it yourself one day, making the money go round, so you may as well know what it's like. There's ten shillings a week for the mortgage, just to keep a roof over our heads. Coal, gas and electricity, that's another six shillings. And food and clothing sees the back of two pounds a week, no matter how careful I am. So please, love, don't be wanting extras, eh? There must be something left over. Left over? I've hardly started. There's insurance and fares, and simply keeping clean and smart. I know folks say it costs nothing to be clean, but it does. You can't wonder really poor folk don't bother. Look, I was in the chemist today for six pence of razor blaze and a shilling jar of brill cream for your dad. So he's fit to hold down a white collar job. And I bought a threepenny bar of family health soap and one and three for toothpaste. Now you tell me, Miss Clever Clogs, what's left over? If I nag when you leave the soap in the water and squeeze blobs of toothpaste all over the basin, that's why. I'm not sorry. You've got to learn. I'm sorry about the kitten, though. It was cruelty. Nobody has the right. No, of course not. I couldn't have stood by and seen it drowned either. I'll ask the neighbours. Mrs. Levinson might like it for Rebecca. I just want to be sure it has a good home. Patricia, if nobody's keen, we'll manage. Thanks, Mum. My Ramblin' Bryant? Yes. I'll be rich. Ah, you will. You know, Mr. Padwick from the post office lives down Delamere Way. Aye. Well, he were in here this morning inquiring, and I think you'd find him very grateful to see his dog back home again. Mr. Padwick? Aye. Thanks, Mr. Taylor. I'll do me round first and then take him back. All right. What is Guernica? Spanish rebels destroyed Guernica. Guernica. It's a whole town full of people in Spain. It's been bombed. Whole town? All right. Oh, 
sure of doing, Arthur. Uh, yes. Coming for a drink at the Feathers? Well, it was just off home, actually, but, uh, well, why not? Good. I've heard of an opportunity for young Jimmy. Thought you'd like to know. Oh, well, in that case... <laughs> Edward in bed? Yes. It's all right. The Levinsons are going to keep the kitten. Oh. Oh, I am glad. So I can play with it and watch it grow up. That's nice. Your dad's late. And Jimmy. I can't think why. The tea's ready. Why? What's the matter? You know, you saw me put that ten shilling note in that envelope this morning. Yes. The instalment on the furniture. Well, it's gone. Lost. I don't know what I'm going to do. I was going to make the repayment on my way back to the library, but then Jimmy returned the books. I think it's in one of them. He couldn't know it. He meant well. well. Someone might have found it. We can always ask at the library. I don't like to. It's shameful admitting you've got furniture in the house that I've been paid for. They try to keep it quiet when you're buying on our purchase. To deliver in a plain van. I only hope they bring a plain van when they take it all away again, because we've fallen behind with our payments. Michael! Hey, all of us! Oh, you will be gone if you don't. Have you sorted anything out yet? Yes. yes. My fishing rod? You're not taking my fishing rod. Don't have? No. I'm going to paint it on for those outdoors. Hold on. I've already got five shillings from Mr. Patrick for taking his dog home. Can I have a look? All right. No, Edward's tram. <coughs> Hurry up. Dad's home and they're already having a bit of a row. But we can't pop with Edward's tram. Because there's another day. We won't. There isn't room. Not even if Jimmy does go to Birmingham. Hey, I'm at the end of my tether, that's all. And it doesn't help you coming home all cheerful because you've been drinking. It was only half a pint of beer. Arthur, anyway. listen. No, you listen. There's the rag and bone man. He might just as well come and take away all our shabby clothes and furniture because it's all they're fit for. Well, I don't know what brought this on, but you can cut it out right I now. I know you do your best, but we're always so short of money. Then it seems to me as if our Jimmy's going to turn out to be the sort of man who spends his life on public assistance unless... unless we turn him out of our home and force him to go and live miles away. No, just a minute, just a minute. When I can get a word in edgeways, just be quiet. It's better to stay quiet. I've been having a drink with a chap called Padwick. And do you know what? I think I've got Jimmy fixed up here in Bradley. Oh, Arthur. Oh, then. No, don't be daft. We'll tell him after tea. No, you speak to him. I've got to swallow me pride and go to the library. Poor you. What a homecoming. I wish I could get a job, too. No. I know I've still got Edward to look after, but women ought to be allowed to go on teaching after they're married. When I think of all my training going to waste and the salary, I could cry. We need so many things for the house. There's nothing needed in a home so much as a wife and mother. Mum. What's this? Well, most of it's from Jimmy, but we've... We've sold Edward's pram to Rag and Bone Man. Well, it were doing nothing in the garage now Edward's out of it. Unless you wanted another baby, but I didn't have time to ask. The cart was off up the road. <laughs> Thank you, love. And we won't be having another baby. I'm well content with the children I've got. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> so you returned his dog, did you? No wonder Mr. Padwick favoured you. Go and listen to me. Aye. Of course, you'll have to sit a test. Once you're on the head postmaster's payroll, you'll have security. You'll be able to work your way up, take examinations, sorting clerk, telegraphy. You could even try for the civil service. I quite envy you the moment. Stepping out into the real world, first day at work, eh? <laughs> I'll never forget the day I went out as a boy and came home a wage earner. The post office will give you a uniform. Pillbox hat and a jacket and... a new bike. And a new bike, have not they? <laughs> hey, look, Mum. Oh, no. Don't tell me. Oh, you. Great. 
I hear it's about you a pair of long trousers. Oh, well, with what you've given me, that's one leg paid for. Mm. <laughs> <laughs>